to Crazy Towns, 10 minutes or less. I'm Jonas. I'm TNT Don. I'm Mike the Explosive One, and we are doing 10 minutes or less, so let's start the timer. Yes, sir. So, as, as TNT, always. I uh, meant to bring this up a few weeks ago and totally forgot, and uh, so... Austin has a paper. It's called the Austin Chronicle. Yeah. It's uh, similar to Scene Magazine in Cleveland. <laughs> they put out a periodical with like events and local information and stuff like that. Do you remember the Plain Dealer? I do. That was the pa- <laughs> I think that paper still exists. Because I don't think this... I think the Austin Chronicle is more like Scene Magazine yeah. in Cleveland. What was the what was the Astro Beulah news? Star paper? Beacon. Star Beacon. Yeah, could not think of so, that. So anyway, I read. I, I saw something online about a little bit of controversy, and I had to do some digging. So, a little bit of controversy. They put out an article on their online edition of the Chronicle. Okay. The name of this article: Asian Mail Order Brides: colon, Your Guide to Asian Women for Marriage. Okay. Asian Mail Order Brides Find Your True Soulmate Online. Okay. And sounds like sounds like a deal. And people deal uh, of a lifetime. People were like, "Oh, so you're just gonna like." put out an article on how to traffic women via marriage to the United States. No, dude, you just, they're like sea monkeys. Oh, is that what it is? You get, them, you get them, you put them in a little bit of water, and then they grow into a full-size bride. Oh, yeah, is that how it goes? Pretty, no? No, I don't think so. So, wait, it, it was, it was this, wait, hold on. So, wait, first off, what you're doing is you're shattering my childhood. Because you want a mail-order in, bride and you no, can't get one? By inferring that the the male mail order brides of yore were simply trafficked women. Is that what you're telling me? I mean, I mean, it, they might not be. They might not be, or they might, or they might be, or some of them might be. Which, I mean, it really can go either way. What ratio of non traffic consensual women mail ordering themselves out to trafficked woman? Dude, I don't know because I feel like the trafficked. People, women, men, whatever. <laughs> Traffic people, yes. Are is a lot. We think it's a lot less than it is. Yeah, I agree, and I also think they kind of. It's kind of like manipulation of the uh, of the nomenclature. It's like because like it used to just be a pimp with with some hoes, you know, back in like the day, and now it's like you know you're trafficking women. You well, yeah, well, there's a difference between selling them into sex slavery and 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 someone and like mean, what protecting is... them on the streets when they're selling their vagina and for not, money. And I'm not trying to sympathize with the pimp. Obviously, it's an awful thing. If anything, I'm for the language being changed so that these people who do these awful things to these women in order to have them do sexual or whatever acts to other people, I'm glad that they're being held accountable. I'm just saying is that they did change the way it was it was kind of put together. And it was like, oh, you used to just smuggle immigrants in from, you know, Mexico or whatever. But now you're smuggling in women so that you can have more prostitutes. Now, now I think there are really women and in, in Eastern trafficking. Europe and things like that. That, that they're like, I want to go to the U.S. and the way I can do that is through marriage. Yes. So they get someone to fall in love with them, marry them. They come here. Yeah. Some of them are legit and probably stay with the guy, and some of them probably come here just strictly to get here and then screw the guy over, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure that's a screw thing. the guy over. Um, now I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second about the pimps and hoes thing that you're talking about. Whoa, okay. the, the the idea of a pimp in theory. Here, Jonas is, is going to build for you the image no, of a pimp no, with a heart of it's gold. It's not a bad idea, right? So, like, if if it's you're going to be, if you're a idea. woman and you decide, or even a man, and you decide that you're going to sell yourself for sex, right? Yes. It is not a bad idea to have someone looking out for you, giving you some protection. If somebody tries to do something bad to you, they're there to help you. But the but as in any power exchange sort of situation. They take advantage, and then they end up feeling abused and trapped, and all of that. Like it'd be like it'd be like a, like a cam girl having a manager, right? And they're like, "Hey, I want you to come do a photo shoot with me to protect me from what the people on the abuse, screen? rape, whatever, dude. Like people, prostitutes get raped. Dude. What job do you know where there's a chance you might get raped, and the job isn't taking steps to protect their employees? What? <laughs> Wait, say that that one more time. What job do you know where there's potential for any type of bodily harm or danger to occur with you, especially rape, and then the job is not taking steps to protect its employee? Right, and that's where the pimp comes (laughs) in for the prostitutes. I mean, it it should be innate. 
It should be there without. Yeah, but if you're doing an illegal trade, that would be like a bodyguard for a, a bodyguard for a drug dealer, right? Or like the 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 drug kingpin to the to the to the low man. He's there okay, to protect okay, you. Okay. Okay. But like no, but but it, what always happens is the power goes to the head. Then there's abuse. Then there's mistreatment. Then there's whatever. Well, all, think, all I'm okay. saying is the idea of having someone to look over you and protect you if you're in a, in a situation where you could be hurt or mistreated or manhandled or whatever. The idea, the concept, I get, okay. right? But it never works that way. So you're saying because it is an illegal business that the onus falls on the employee right. to protect themselves right. from any incurred danger. And this, and this entrepreneur freelance. comes in and he's like, I'll be your bodyguard. I'll protect yeah. you. I'll give you a place to stay. Okay. But then if you're a narcissist and you treat and you take that power and you hold it above their head and they can't get away from you, you get them hooked on drugs, all that sort of stuff, that is... But if you were like... Like trying to build them up, like yeah, girl, go out there, yeah, guy, I mean, go out there and get when, that. When you say power exchange, it just means like uh, domestic violence. It's essentially well, no, just, what you're no, saying. No, the power exchange is like they have a position of power over that person. And what is the position of power? That they're the protector, so they look up to them as someone to protect them, oh, and look out for them, and that's more of a relinquishment of power. Because you know, I feel like if I wasn't happy with uh, with with my insurance company pimp i would just get another insurance company another pimp right that, and that's where the the negativity comes in too because then they're like oh no i'm not just here for coverage i own you now and you're like yo yo no 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 i didn't sign up to be owned <laughs> like, yeah, that's where i gotta be the domestic violence into right happening. exactly whether it be psychological so, or physical or whatever so, no, i just like, like i mean the idea of a pimp for an, a prostitute in illegal sense makes sense but it just you, the people that get into that business are just going to take advantage and make it wrong, right? I mean, it, yeah, it's kind of a jacked up business anyway. I no, mean, absolutely. you know, in the places it's legal, it's legal. But like you said, it's an illegal trade. So obviously they're not going to have some of the uh, the incidentals that uh, right. other OSHA jobs ain't looking have. out for the prostitutes, right? Like uh, male or female, right? Yeah. But I mean, like at the Bunny Ranch, definitely that stuff. Oh, happens. yeah. Yeah. But it's legal there. Exactly. Exactly. Madam Loren comes in and she's like, "You trying to play with my girl?" And she just cuts a <laughs> wang off, dude. <laughs> Anyways, back to the story of mail order brides. Oddly enough, yes, a girl I knew in Ohio. Oh no, here we go. Her father. Here we go. Was an interesting man. We'll leave it at that. I mean, you have to. He be. he raised uh he raised reindeer. Okay. And sold them. That was how he made money. Okay, fair. He uh. It's a good gig. He. He found a bride in Thailand. Yeah, I mean, but lots of... I feel like that happens a lot. Well, yeah. Moved her to the States. Okay. She went back in two weeks. Oh. So I was like, this girl gets pulled out of Thailand because uh -huh. that's what she wants. Comes yes. to the U.S. What happened in two weeks that she was like, no, nah, I'm going back to Thailand? I don't know, man. She might have got freaked out, though. She couldn't do it. No, she, he's, he's do Raid Reindeer, dude. No, was he just a weirdo? Is that what you're insinuating? That he was weird and drove her out? I don't know. Maybe. But then he got another one, and I think he lives in Thailand now. I don't talk to the girl anymore he either. Got she got another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He found another, another Thailand bride. <laughs> he got another. Like, like she picked up a new kitten on her way home or well, something. Well, that's the weird thing about mail-order brides, dude. It's like, oh, like I'll just I'll just, I'll just, just find one. Thing. I mean, one of many. Like, it's <laughs> like, oh, I found one. I'm going to get... That's so strange, dude. Like mail order husbands, I'm sure they're out there too, right? Like, not nah, as in hide the man, right? Though. But like, yeah, exactly. There's just, I just okay. There's been at points in my life where I'm like, oh man, I'm lonely, right? Like at some point, sure. Never in my life would I be like, oh, I'm just gonna order a woman off the internet. Yeah, <laughs> so she it can be my wife. Like it, does, it seems a little sketch. Yeah, ordering dude. a girl or a mail order bride seems like you're going to like one of those websites where you fill out all your personal information and then you never get the item. <laughs> They're like, put in all this information. You're like, okay. Yeah. And then you're like, wait, oh, I yeah. didn't get my confirmation email. Yeah, yeah. And then your bank account ends up being emptied right. out. Right. Right. Exactly. It's just, it is a, it's, it just seems like a weird business. It is a weird, a weird business, yeah, to say the least. And like, who, who's, who owns these websites? Like, they're, they're, that's the pimp, dude. There's a pimp pimping out these poor women and men, I'm sure too, in other <laughs> countries to be like, hey, we'll take you to the U.S. and you'll become, 
Yankee blue jeans, right? Like Yankee blue jeans. American pie and uh, yeah, apple pie and, and Americana. And, and, yeah, this is the happiest place on earth. McDonald's. You, you can tell by how happy everybody everybody's is. Everybody's here. Everybody's I mean, happy. You, yeah, everybody's fat and happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I just thought that was weird that a paper. Pl- then they they got some backlash, and obviously they took the article down. Fair and, enough, man. Fair enough. Right, right. So uh, no, I don't condone mail order brides. I just thought it was interesting. I was. I like, don't condone pimping. Yeah, I don't condone pimping either. Um, but yeah. Anyways, that's all the time we have for this episode. Uh, please make sure to go to thecrazytown.com and subscribe. Once you do that, uh, just come back and watch more for Jonas. Oh, uh, we out.